You're welcome to this special edition of the Economy and Politics Show, where we discuss analyst notes published from the Stable of Pressure Research. Today, we're looking at the cost of living crisis in Nigeria and the way forward for households. We meet to have this conversation. It's Teve Aldo, a macroeconomist with ProShare. Teve, it's nice to have you. Honestly. Thank you for having me. We're in very dire straits as a country. It's a challenging time. But the major concern first is that we have seen several interventions from the fiscal. Let's talk about the monetary policy where we've seen that between February to July, we've seen an 800 basis points hike in interest rates. Inflation is still at its high, 33.4%. Food inflation is still around that range of 39, uh, close to 40%. And this has impacted the cost of foodstuffs and shows so much um, pressure on the households, which are the central unit of our economy. Everything around the economy revolves around the households. No matter the policy um, simulations that you see, if the households are squeezed, like our president said, famous thing our president said, let the poor breathe, they will not be happy. So we are still at this point where the poor, the households are squeezed. They need to breathe. Speak to us around these issues and why is it that despite all the policy interventions, the households are still being squeezed and they're still gasping for breath? Uh, so basically, um, Nigeria's inflation would be the reason the CBN had to go on the monetary policy hike, which we've seen. Like you've noted, the interest rate has uh, been increased by about 800 basis points point so far this year. Because mm -hmm. you see the inflation, which was around the headline inflation, of course, was around 21%. So January 2023, maintain an upward momentum as it increased throughout 2023, up until even December, where it was around 28%. Mm. Going into this year, 2024, inflation continued to rise. So the CBN governor and the Monetary Policy Committee, which were formed, believed that there was a need for us to go uh, on an orthodox monetary policy approach, mm. which um, resulted or required the CBN uh, governor and his team to hike the interest rate. Mm. And uh, so far, has it been effective? It hasn't really been effective, would be the major lesson we have learned. Mm. The monetary policy rate is basically also aimed at, you know, reducing possibly the money supply in the mm. economy. When you believe that, you know, the inflation could be driven by excess liquidity in the system. Mm. So we hike the rates in order to mop up some of this liquidity. Mm. But you look at the fact that as at even February, where, uh, when the money supply was around, 99 trillion mm. monetary policy was hiked mm. up until this period we have it hiked by 800 mm. uh, basis points mm. but money, money supply in itself has only succeeded in increasing and is over a hundred trillion mm. in fact over 101 trillion mm. currently mm. so it shows that in terms of its ability to you know control this uh, money supply, it's been uh, not effective. It's been ineffective. Yes. So we then see that inflation has maintained its upward momentum. And inflation, which was 21% last year and 29% as of January this year, is now around, you know, rose to, to, to around its current 33.4%. Uh, mm. And the major factors or other contributing factors, you mm. know, include things like the food inflation. We, 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 we have things and like, 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 energy, like costs, the, the energy costs, logistics, see, the, logistics the, the petrol mm -hmm. crisis we are having right now and is something that has lingered on. Up, so a lot of sectors in mm. the economy depend mm. on what happens to energy, yeah. both in terms of electricity, in terms of the petrol, mm. in terms of gas, mm. and you know, this, Households themselves depend on this. So, this. So, am I right? If I, if I, if I, if I, if I right, uh, as an economist has said that maybe there's been a 
a lag in the reform process of this administration and they may need to have, have a reset? Well, we, we, when, when we say lag, you know, when a policy is formed, we believe mm. that after a certain period of time, its effectiveness, mm. its advantage, the benefits to be derived from that policy would be seen. Mm -hmm. Now, the lag effect, if we might say it's a lag effect so far, have been negative, mm. implying that a situation worse has only been made worse, mm. which in economics we might refer to it as cobra effect. Mm. They bring out policies aimed at solving something, but that policy has only aimed at, you know, making it worse. Reversing the challenges. So the, the inflation challenge mm. is not basically a monetary policy phenomenon. We hear it's like more of a cost push with this uh, pump price issue coming and up now. A lot of structural fundamentals, fundamentals are there, which are, you know, uh, will continue to counterbalance whatever effect the monetary policy wants to have. Mm. So the monetary policy, yes, it's necessary. Mm. But we have argued as ProShare in several of our articles that its level of effectiveness is questionable because it will only be necessary but insufficient if inflation is to be curbed. So household budgets have revealed a growing deficit. Um, savings are shrinking, there are constant trends. Saving this period has been very challenging, I don't know for you. Saving to buy appliances, saving to achieve your targets, it's been really, really squeezed. And of course, at average and below average income class segments, the rich, the ultra rich, the uh, middle class, which are squeezed now, we don't even know the percentages, working class, everybody's just complaining about the challenges. And then households in all segments are trying to fund their income and all that. But it's a challenge because it's majorly on consumption. This is challenging in an era of the cost of living uh, crisis that we are looking at. But what is the pathway? And I, I want to speak because, of course, we've had some conversations and webinars recently uh, where we've looked at even the presidential a fiscal policy and tax reforms committee. But what for you is the pathway? Looking at the fact that there's a lag in reforms and that there's a need once again to stimulate activity so that the households are not squeezed. The pathway is it's very oblique in the sense that policies are being made and so far ineffective, uncertainties surround if these policies would be effective enough to solve the problem, the cost of living crisis problem households are facing currently. So in our most recent uh, article on Prussia, yeah. yeah. we actually wrote on the, the household as the common denominator yes, common of effectiveness of, of government, policies, government policies, of course. Yes. So the analyst notes actually shows that Households are basically trying to survive right mm. now. Survivor is the only the first instinct. Yes, that's yeah. the yeah. only thing everyone is trying to do right now. Mm. You go out from your house every day or you leave the house, you want to reach your work. You hear that the petrol, there's no petrol. Mm. And so you're struggling to get vehicles yes. to take you to where you want to. Yeah. All you know at that point is that you have to get to work. Yes. And you have to try to get there early, mm -hmm. no matter what. Schools yeah. will be resuming quick. Mm. People are not comfortable because they are thinking about how they will take their children to school because they can't even get the fall to take, you know, move yes. around. Yes. So these are some of the challenges. It's mm. basically survival. Mm. So would, if you've said it, you've rightly pointed out that a lot of people are going to be deceiving. Mm. They have to take out of their savings. Even saving. the pension commission has said that people are withdrawing from pensions. Exactly. You know, because pension is long term, but people exactly. are going to withdraw, apply to withdraw. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the, 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 the saving will be there. And like you rightly pointed out, a lot of people would want to borrow more. Mm -hmm. So it won't be surprising to see that some of these new banks and you know micro lending and fintechs, of course, they, they, they involve they, in they savings and loans. Be, be extending, you know, the, the level or the extent to which they give micro credits to household yeah. would have risen mm. a lot. Mm. So we also see a lot of people, okay, having this shift mm. to not just depending 
on a single source of income. Yeah. People now have to, you know, explore other means mm. in this survival pathway. Mm. You know, explore other source, sources of income mm. to balance What's you know there? what they currently have. So we see a lot of people moving for moonlightning, moonlightning gains mm. or extra jobs or extra side hustles. Mm. We see a lot of people also learning, you know, some extra skills. Yes. And it's across it, it cuts across every you know, not just from the, the, the smallest of households, even the, the youths, yeah. the people in the professional space, because people in the professional space, so let's not forget, they need to constantly upskill. Mm, skill, skill. To so with the if, 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 if you need to upskill, you need to spend on mm. some courses mm. to learn those skills, mm. which means that you need funds. Yeah. Most of that funds which you are allocating to family or consumption, consumption. And, you know, and there are some people calling you yes, that utilities. they need your help, your assistance. You what do you call the black tax? Be, Dependency. Exactly. Yeah. So this is just what is happening right mm. now. The pathway in terms of if this would you know, ease out you know, in the, in the short question. term, Big question. It's, it's, it's something with a very big question mark mm. because uncertainties surround all of the policies, even the fiscal interventions, yeah, fiscal a lot of uncertainties are, surround them. Yes, the fiscal interventions are coming under question because social intervention is very critical at this time. The former minister, of, the, of course, responsible for um, humanitarian and social intervention activities was suspended. Um, but the Minister of Finance, the Community Minister of the Economy, is now taking charge of the whole process. Mm -hmm. But we still require more clarity on how they are intervening. Last we heard was 4 million people have benefited from the conditional cash transfer. Yes. Those kind of things need to be tracked to see the impact uh, again on the citizens. But you've talked about some options, getting alternative sources of income, skills, and all that. Um, in addition, when you look at policy, policy meeting the households. What, what do you expect? How, how can we have this um, alignment in a way that begins to show that, yes, the government is listening and then um, they're beginning to address those challenges. Sectors that need to be addressed. Mm -hmm. Sectors that need to be prioritized. Mm -hmm. I know that the Fiscal Policy Committee has said education, healthcare, mm -hmm. uh, issues around trans infrastructure, transportation. Mm -hmm. But over, overall, as, a, as, an, as a economist looking at this whole situation, mm -hmm. what, what is critical? For the government. I hear the president saying that in China that we will make, we will take tough decisions. What tough decisions do you expect to see when he returns? Basically, they've, they've made a lot of decisions which they described as tough. Mm. And we've seen a lot of policies to roll out. But the common man on the street, it's not connected. No matter the decisions you make, mm. the policies you make, the ordinary Nigerians, are feeling a situation which we could call pain. Mm. That is the feeling. Chaos, social unrest. Mm. We saw some the protests. Some bad time government back. protests. So that is what households are feeling. Mm. And if you have come and say, I would give you a renewed hope, mm. was there even ever a hope mm. to start with? Which means you, want, you have to start by even creating hope mm. so that people have to have that sense that this leader is the one to take us to the next level. Mm. But the policies so far for the common man on the street, he does not understand what is going on right now mm. with everything they've mm. seen. Yeah. So we've seen subsidy removal. Did that end up you know, impacting or creating better welfare a year later? Mm. We've seen that yeah. last year a state of emergency yes. was, was, was announced on food, food insecurity food. in Nigeria. Yeah. After one year, of state of emergency. And you know, when we say a state of emergency has been declared on food insecurity, mm. it shows that all efforts, everything has to be. But then, after one year mm. of that state of emergency, it was, you would be surprised to find out that food inflation actually peaked at 40% yeah. for something that was at a state of emergency. Yeah. So we've seen issues surrounding the, the petrol mm. and NNPC. Yes. It's, it's, there's so much shadiness yeah. and distrust among households distrust for distrust. everything going on you know, between these governments. So currently, if I were to speak, I would say the government needs to get its acts right. The government needs to get the right people 
to do the job. So this is if some you sort of have, digging, if possible. Exactly. So if the, if the president does not work alone, he has ministers. Yes. These ministers go a long way in determining how these policies come. Mm. So you need to get the right people to do the job. Mm. I'm not saying that we have the wrong people, but the people there should be checkmated. That means you have to look at the metrics they're using. They say they have these metrics of assessing the performance of the cabinet. You cannot so have, have a mechanical <laughs> you know, fault on your car mm. and then call a carpenter mm. to come and check it for you. Yeah. You so we need to check mm. who is performing, who mm. is not. Mm. They have to be very certain mm. on what exactly the specific goals we want to achieve. In terms of your economic plan. Scenario and analysis need to be yeah. created mm. when they plan. If this doesn't work out, what next? If it works, what next? We have a 150-day policy right now. Yes, for has it been imp- Has it been implemented? That's, a big, that's another area to look at, the implementation. So it, Between it, customs, Mr. Minister of Finance, is everything synergizing? Exactly. So Very the cool. questions need to be asked. Okay, we've brought in this policy. Mm. If we've effected this policy, what are the impacts that we're going to get? Mm. After this policy, what next? Yeah. That question must always be there. What next? Mm. What next? How does this impact the household? How can we ensure that we minimize the impact or the pains that... Because like you rightly said, there are bold policies. Yeah. But this bold policy will come with pains. pains. So the government have to also calibrate, Communicate you know, the fact the that buying. they would also, you know, put buffers to, to minimize these pains yes. the households are going to, to mm. face. Or else it's going to be chaos and we might end up seeing some other social tensions, you know, just which, like the protests we we, uh, opera we saw yeah. so, uh, some months back yeah. in August. Yeah. Okay, looking at the, the recent commentary of July inflation, which showed um, it's at a peak now. I begin to see the acceleration, like it's going to begin to go down. But I'm looking at several measures that you highlighted to curb the inflationary pressures and the risk. And I also want to look at your outlook for the fourth quarter of 2024, because we are seeing already, you've talked about the fuel pump price increase. Between 55 naira to a liter to 900, and we still need clarity from the president, who is the minister of petroleum, in this whole issue. So, can you speak to us around the outlook? What are the critical issues that have to be addressed, and the risk that have need to be in the households will need to navigate? We raised questions about a peak in uh, July inflation commentary. The August inflation commentary too would be out Excuse sometime uh, this 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 month. Yeah. Uh, basically, we looked at global inflationary trends, mm-hmm. African economies' mm-hmm. inflationary trend, mm-hmm. including Nigeria. The question needed to be raised because we wanted to understand the dynamics of what exactly went on between the time inflation began to rise, at what point it peaked, and when it began to decelerate. What went on? between this period. And as such, in Nigeria, it needed to also some checking, for us to do some checking. Mm. We had seen inflation rise to 34%. And then in July, it's dipped to around 33.4%. So the question is, will that deceleration continue? Mm. Or was it just a temporary uh, uh, activity or performance or deceleration. Mm. Now, in between the rise, the peak, and the fall, in many of these economies, we saw that there was a lot of hiking of interest rates. Mm. In most of these economies, of course, it worked. In Nigeria, we also noticed a hike in these interest rates. In Nigeria, has it worked so far? we cannot totally attribute it to the monetary policy hike. Yeah. Note that a deceleration was majorly driven by a fall in the food component of the inflation. Yeah. And the food component was basically because we are going into some harvest season. You know, So we are basically expecting that uh, we should be seeing some moderation in food prices because harvest will be on for the next two 
three months. So it would be elevated, but a bit moderated from the peak period which we had it. Yeah. Now, a challenge, or one other thing to note is that the structural fundamentals of inflation, mm -hmm. which is embedded in the core inflation itself, had no change. Mm -hmm. Those were still maintaining an uptick. Mm -hmm. They were still on the rise, mm -hmm. implying that structural issues such as power, the energy, the petrol hike mm -hmm. are risk. We have the issue of the exchange rate there still as risk. We have the issue of transportation costs, logistics, which are risk. All these things together may counterbalance whatever impact we are going to have or whatever gains have been made on the inflation in Nigeria. And as such, in terms of projection for the next quarter, it's very, very uncertain. <laughs> Central Bank of Nigeria. Mm. We are not certain that we, because this exchange rate dynamics which continue to depreciate, the petrol crisis which remain unresolved, and you know even we, if we have the supply, mm. the Dangote production is not a silver bullet yeah. to you know ensuring that prices will, will be you know, something moderate. affordable at this point. It's a business, so a business. the market <laughs> has to determine. Market yeah. forces will determine the price. Yeah. So it's, it's not certain that the deceleration would continue in the next month. We might see a moderation, but that moderation might be counterbalanced by the prevailing forces of the structural fundamentals or risk. So it's very clear from this conversation that the government and its economic team need to go back to the drawing board and look at how it resets its policy exactly. in a way that it improves income distribution, addresses those sort of social interventions that mean a lot to households and reduce their burdens. Now, a very fundamental question there is, if the harvest season gains mm. were to cause a moderation in uh, the food inflation, yeah. which might make us see uh, some moderation in the headline inflation, after the harvest season, what happens next? Mm. Food becomes scarce again, and then the food inflation begins to, to go back on its upward trend and the headline inflation. Because, so the what next question must always be there. Mm. So in terms of the food, what exactly has been done about insecurity? In terms of transportation, energy how cost, effective has logistics, logistics you know, been? Mm. Energy costs, mm. issues. How have we, the cheapest region in terms of food inflation in Nigeria has an inflation over 32% which is in the north. Mm. So you are importing expensive materials or food items from the northern region down to the south. Mm. So it's no surprise to see that in the south, we'll see very expensive food items here. Very expensive. So these things going unchecked, mm. you know, would you know, ultimately result to an inflation, which, you know, right now is going to be an illusion, whatever moderation we have now. Yeah. And a very, very fundamental way to also solve this problem will be to check the issues of the, the exchange rates. The exchange rates. The weak exchange rates, if not strengthened, will not solve this problem. We believe at ProShare that a fundamental driver of the food inflation, the, 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 the headline inflation, mm -hmm. is the exchange rates. So we have to boost, go into activities that boost our foreign exchange. If the weak earnings. exchanges can be strengthened, mm. that will go a long way in solving a lot of issues. We've seen a lot of businesses in Nigeria make massive exchange list rate losses. Mm. The food, the, the manufacturing, too. exactly. Mm. So that's, that's, that's a way to go. Exploring more measures yeah. to strengthen the exchange rate. Exploring more measures to curb inflation. Mm. The weak oil supply needs to also be checked. Yes. We have, we had... Uh, NNPCL says targeting 2 million barrels. It's a long time we did 2 million barrels. It's a very long time. Mm. Even 1.7, mm. which we have right now, we can't even reach it. Mm. And that is a major source of FX. Yeah. A huge concern. And in, in wrapping this up, it goes back to what Proshi has also um, highlighted, the need for us to turn assets to wealth. 
Ministry exactly. of Finance and Corporate needs to be exactly. empowered. I want to see what the president, when he comes back, because he needs to address the issue of Mofi. They need to mm -hmm. get on track mm -hmm. to turn state-owned enterprises and assets into wealth. Exactly. And that's a very key way of boosting our foreign exchange earnings mm -hmm. and also uh, stabilizing these issues around inflation. So uh, basically... But, but a lot of expectations. Mm -hmm. You also know, Terry, that there's an accelerated um, um, economic plan, the team that was inaugurated mm -hmm. with the finance minister. Mm -hmm. I want to see more of what they're doing. It's very critical at this time. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much, Terry Aldo, Macroeconomics Project, for this interesting conversation, special edition of the Economic and Politics Show, discussing around the cost of living crisis, and of course, the options for households. Thank you so much for uh, taking our time to be part of this conversation. Thank you. To our viewers, that was an interesting conversation on the cost of living crisis and options for households in Nigeria. If you want to get further updates and get to know our published articles, analyst notes on households as denominators in the economy, and also the commentary on the July 2024 inflation, log on to our website, it's played on the screen, and you'll get all of them cleared your tips to learn more. Also, follow our social media platforms displayed on the screen to get further updates on developments in the economy and the financial markets. Thank you for being part of this conversation. To come your way again, I'm Otoba Sebasekong. Bye for now. <laughs>